Hey Optimancers, Chris here. Spells are fun, but what can be less fun is when you cast a spell and then that darn monster makes it saving throw. Now, I personally try to avoid the single target spells where if the creature makes it save, nothing happens, but I still take some of them. And there's many spells which target several creatures, providing saving throws to all of them, which I am much more fond of. And those can just be a lot more or less effective depending on the saving throw difficulty. And we should talk about legendary resistance because that's a thing. And if the monster fails a saving throw and then uses legendary resistance, there's no way we can fix that. We either have to adjust our tactics by switching to spells that either don't provide a saving throw, or at least have partial effects when a saving throw is succeeded, or we can keep throwing the same kinds of spells hoping to burn those legendaries so our spells start to stick. Hi, these videos are supported by my patrons. If you would be interested in supporting this channel, you can do so through Patreon, the link is in the video description. My patrons have already seen this video early and without the YouTube ads. Additional levels of support get you an exclusive Discord community, as well as getting your name recognized in a video, as today I will be recognizing Condor, John D, Discarpus9, Eric Harvey, Lightfoot, Glenn Wilson, Jay Good, Jared Huberger, John Hugdahl, Hassan, Wu Carl Kong, Lila Corpsegrave, Mark D, Lone Pilgrim, Michael Michael, Moxie, Notorious Thief, Philip Martin, Reichenstahl, Ryan Wilmot, Shane and Todd Beyond, Taftash, Thunderlock, Clovier, Vo, and William Whittles. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get going. Remember though, to burn that legendary resistance, the monster needs to fail that saving throw in the first place. And some monsters have pretty high saving throws, and things like magical resistance can give them advantage on those checks. And I would be remiss not to mention that one strategy is to target the saving throw you either expect to be weaker, or you've tested and you know it's weaker. If you have no idea, well, test intelligence. That's a pretty good guess if you have to take a shot in the dark. But if you read the title of this video, you know what we're going to look at more specifically. If we can get our spell DCs high enough, we do really improve our odds. Today I want to go through the various ways we can make it as likely as possible that the targets of our spells fail their saving throws. And what that means is looking at every way we can increase our spell DCs. At the end, I'm going to go through what is a ludicrous exercise, but we're going to see how high we can legally get spell DCs on a single character. So to figure out your spell DC, you're taking an 8, then you're adding your proficiency bonus, and then your ability score bonus. So if our first level cleric has a 16 wisdom, then that's 8 plus 2 proficiency plus 3 wisdom, or a spell DC of 13. If we were to average everything out, this means a monster with a challenge rating between 2 and 4 has about a 50% chance, on average, to make their saving throw against our spells. If we take this to the limit, so level 20 with using our ability score bonuses to get a 20 wisdom, then the spell DC is 8 plus 6 proficiency plus 5 wisdom or a spell DC of 19. In theory, a monster that even has a saving throw of plus 0, or I mean even minus 1, could in theory make their saving throw against our spells, though obviously that's not very likely. However, if you're 20th level, Obviously, I wouldn't count on creatures having a plus zero to their saving throw. In fact, the tougher creatures in the game sometimes have such a high saving throw, they would have no chance to fail at all. There are things we can do as players with our builds to decrease the odds that saving throws against our spells are going to succeed. And there's magic items that can help us too. So let's go through the ways to increase the chance that the monster fails at saving throw. First off, there's the ones I've referenced already. As we increase in levels, our proficiency bonus goes up, and when it does, our spell DC increases with it. Our spells will benefit from one of our ability scores, and we can increase that up to 20, increasing our spell DC as well, which on their own eventually get us to that 19 spell DC. 
So with our actual character builds, other than keeping our ability score high, there's nothing we can do to increase our spell DCs, but there are a number of things that we can do to make it more likely that the monster is going to fail their saving throw. So I want to look at those. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at magic items, because that is pretty much the only way you're going to actually increase your spell DCs. So I want to look at all of those and then see how they all fit together. Heightened Spell Metamagic is available to sorcerers of at least three levels. This doesn't improve our spell DC, but what it does do is give one target of our spell disadvantage on their saving throw. This one is expensive though, three sorcery points to heighten one spell. To put this in perspective, just how high that is, if you were to take the Metamagic Adept feat on its own and select Heightened Spell Metamagic, you actually wouldn't get enough sorcery points to use it. Though compared to twinning spell metamagic on high level spells, three sorcery points could be considered a bargain in comparison. Both the Bane and Mind Sliver spells can cause a penalty to saving throws, but in each case, they're going to require an action to cast, unless we quicken them, and in order to get that saving throw penalty at all, the target first has to fail a saving throw. There's more spells that can alter saving throws, Enough that I won't list them all, but generally, any spell that causes a condition that affects saving throws, I mean, some conditions cause automatic fails, like petrified, paralyzed, or unconscious. Bestow curse can cause disadvantage on a single ability score saving throws, and synaptic static can create a d6 penalty, but that's only to concentration saving throws. Silvery barbs can force a reroll on a saving throw, but there's no straight out spell that's just going to boost your spell DCs. You're likely looking at having to have the target fail a saving throw to begin with, or at best get a reroll. And of course, we're expending actions, bonus actions, and or reactions, as well as, with the exception of Mind Sliver, spell slots. There are a few subclasses that can help ensure enemies fail saving throws, though none of them, again, straight out increase our DCs. For example, a Divination Wizard gets Portent, the wizard can then simply replace the roll of the target with one of 2d20s they rolled at the start of the day. That's why a low portent roll can actually be good. An eloquence bard can use unsettling words to impose a penalty on a creature's next saving throw equal to a roll of their bardic inspiration die, which can be anywhere from a d6 to a d12 depending how many levels of bard they have. The creature doesn't get a saving throw against unsettling words itself, though it does use your bonus action and it expands a bardic inspiration to use, so it is resource intensive. I would say though, it is comparatively cheap compared to heightened spell metamagic. If you want to be really resource intensive though, a bard sorcerer could potentially do both. A wild magic sorcerer can use bend luck. This costs two sorcery points and uses a reaction, but it imposes a d4 penalty that can be applied to a saving throw of a creature you can see. This uses your reaction, but one advantage here is this can be applied after the saving throw was made. So let's say you're an eloquence bard, wild magic sorcerer. Well, in theory, you could impose unsettling words on a target, then cast a heightened spell on them, and then use bend luck to alter the result. This would penalize or save by your bardic inspiration die, then they would get disadvantage, and then you could subtract another d4. All it would take, uh, easy, five sorcery points, a bonus action, the action to cast a spell, the spell slot to cast a spell, and your reaction. If that does all seem like too much, then you can just be a Chronergist wizard. At 14th level, you can use your reaction to have a creature just fail their saving throw. I mean, assuming it was possible for them to fail in the first place. This uses your reaction, but the big cost is it causes you to gain a level of exhaustion, and exhaustion is terrible. Nevertheless, I have seen this used to burn through legendary resistances and then polymorph even the toughest creatures. Left a very exhausted Chronergy wizard at the end of the fight though. There are some other build options that are a bit less obvious that can reduce a creature's chance to succeed on their saving throw. If you're a clockwork soul sorcerer, you could use restore balance to remove advantage on a saving throw. So for example, you could use it to cancel out magic resistance. This is a limited resource and uses your reaction. The Rune Knight Fighter with Storm Rune Up could use their reaction to impose disadvantage on a creature's next D20 test. Though, if you're a 7th level Rune Knight, I'm not sure how much you're focusing on your spell DCs. A 9th level Arcane Trickster imposes disadvantage on spells cast while they're hidden. 
pretty good combined with spells like Hypnotic Pattern. But all these examples are advantage or disadvantage and or limited resources, and none of them are a flat increase to our spell DCs. So let's look at how we get those higher. And when it comes to increasing spell DCs, although our build decisions don't straight out do that, our magic items certainly can. I'm focusing just on increases to our spell DCs. So items that can impose disadvantage to saving throws, like the Instrument of the Bards, I'm just not going to be including them here. So first off, there are magic items that can increase our ability score bonus. There would be a lot of magic items to go through, but any increase to your casting ability score bonus increases your spell DCs as well. Technically, we can't increase our ability score above 20 through regular ability score increases, but with magic items, we can technically speaking get any ability score up to a maximum of 30. In fact, technically speaking, you could get them all up to 30. The king of the items that improve your casting ability score are the Tome of Understanding, Clear Thought, or Tome of Leadership and Influence. These increase your Wisdom, Intelligence, or Charisma, respectively, by two points. They require six days of study, and your ability score, as well as the maximum for that ability score, increase by two to that maximum of 30. These stack with themselves, so if you have a 20 Wisdom and theoretically find five Tomes of Understanding, I know, easy, right? They're only very rare. Anyways, you could spend 30 days of study and you would get your wisdom to 30. Another little loophole is the tome regains its magic after 100 years. So again, in theory, you could use the same book more than once. I mean, you just have to wait 100 years. The other thing that adjusted our spell DC is proficiency bonus. And there is a magic item that can boost that as well. That's the Ion Stone of Mastery. This one's a legendary item, it uses an attunement slot, but increases your proficiency bonus by one, which will increase your spell DCs, along with a bunch of other stuff, including your proficient saving throws, your skills, your tools, and all those proficiency bonus per long rest features, they all get another use. I'm going to lump a few items together here, but there's the Arcane Grimoire, the Rod of the Pack Keeper, All Purpose Tools, Bloodwell Vials, Moon Sickles, and Rhythm Maker's Drums, they all provide a bonus of plus one to plus three to your spell DCs for the spells of a specific casting class, depending on the item. I'm mentioning these together because none of them are going to stack with each other. However, there's a couple other items worth specific mention. The Reveler's Concertina provides a plus two bonus to the saving throw of your Bard spells. I mention this specifically because technically, it could stack with the Rhythm Maker's Drum. Both of these items need to be held in order to stack these bonuses. Furthermore, you probably want to have a conversation with your DM. Something like a Concertina for sure needs to be played with two hands, so they might require you to hold it in two hands in order to get the benefit. That could be true of the drum as well. I mean, some drums you could theoretically play with one hand, but that leads to the other question. I mean, normally, wouldn't you wear the drum and hold the drumsticks? I guess it depends on the drum, but if you actually need to hold the drum, then you're going to need two hands to play that as well. Whether being able to play is required to get that bonus, same as with the concertina, that's going to be up to your DM. Next one that needs specific mention is the Amulet of the Devout. Now this one has to be a mistake by the designers. This is very similar to the class specific DC boosters like Arcane Grimoires or Rods of the Pack Keeper but in this case, it can be attuned by a cleric or a paladin. And I assume, because they figured if you're a cleric or a paladin, then those are likely going to be the spells you cast, they didn't bother to specify which spells it applies to. Instead, it says you gain a bonus to spell attack rolls and saving throw DCs of your spells. This means you just need to dip cleric, and then you could attune this. And then the bonus would technically stack with any other saving throw booster you were using. So Wizard 19 Cleric 1 could have an Arcane Grimoire plus 3 and an Amulet of the Devout plus 3 for a total of plus 6 spell DCs on their Wizard spells. Again, that's technically. I suspect the intent here is that would only apply to Cleric and Paladin spells, so I would double check with your DM just to see how they want to handle it. Finally, we have the Robe of the Arch Magi, only another legendary item. This can be attuned by a Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard, and while it's attuned, it's going to give you a plus 2 DC to all your spells. Like the Amulet of the Devout, all your spells get the boost. 
Now, I figure the information I've just given you alone probably has some practical use. But what I want to do for fun, and I mean just for fun, this is purely theoretical, is just how high can we get a spell DC using this information? Well, I'm going to show you the best that I could come up with. To start out, here's what we need. First, we need a humble selection of magic items. A Tome of Leadership and Influence to get our Charisma up to 30. This could be five tomes, or maybe we're using some loophole, like using the sequester spell repeatedly to fall into suspended animation for 100 years, so we can use the same tome again. Either way, it's normally going to be ludicrous, but technically possible. And that's the best kind of possible. Then, we're going to want an Ion Stone of Mastery. Legendary item, easy peasy. Then we want a Robe of the Arch Magi, another legendary item. Again, why wouldn't we have this? Then, a Rhythmaker's Drum plus three, that one's only very rare. And an Amulet of the Devout plus three, also just very rare. Finally, a Reveler's Concertina, and this one's just rare. These things are just lying all over the place. Now, you remember I talked about the problems that we might have using the Reveler's Concertina and the Rhythmaker's Drum at the same time? So that's why our race is Thry Kreen. You need an extra set of hands to hold the tiny object? Done. Then we have the issue of attunement slots. The Iron Stone, the Robe of the Arch Magi, the Rhythm Maker's Drum, the Amulet of the Devout, and the Reveler's Concertina, that's five items. Normally our limit is three. And that's where our class mix comes in. And this one is ugly, folks, but it does technically get the job done. And I even had a couple extra levels to add in a couple additional tricks. So we are going to be an Artificer 14. This gives us five attunement slots. Then we will be Eloquence Bard 3, Cleric 1, Divination 2. Now you might ask, and I think very reasonably, why would we expand 20 levels, mix classes together like Frankenstein would, game the system, and collect a ludicrous set of magic items just to increase the spell DC on a class that we only took three levels for out of 20. And the answer? Because I promised you the highest DC possible. I didn't promise you a good character. Here's how this abomination works out for the spell DCs. And this is just your bard spells. All those other spells don't get all these bonuses. So we have an eight base, then we have the Iron Stone of Mastery, so our proficiency bonus is 7. With Tome of Leadership and Influence Shenanigans, we got our Ability Score bonus up to plus 10. We have plus 3 from the Rhythm Maker's Drum, plus 3 from the Amulet of the Devout, plus 2 from the Reveler's Concertina, plus 2 from the Robe of the Arch Magi, and that leaves us with a 35 spell DC. A creature with a plus 19 saving throw would still need to roll a 16 to save. And a creature with a plus 14, they can't save at all. Now, then I threw in Eloquence Bard, so we could apply a minus D6, and Divination Wizard, so we could replace the roll. These, of course, don't actually increase our spell DC, but they would affect the chance of creatures making their saving throw. And heck, I had a couple extra levels to play around with. So here's the question, can you get this any higher? I think I squeezed every bit of processed cheese out of the tube but let me know if I missed anything. This video was largely for entertainment. Nobody should ever actually make this build or expect these magic items. However, I figure going through these options and magic items does provide some information on raising your spell DC far more reasonably because a higher spell DC can be effective on a build that isn't a disaster like this one is. That said, I'm all done here. So I'm gonna sit back, relax and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.